today on In Fisherman, we are going out on the water and showing you guys how to efficiently use your fish finder from the kayak. There are specific times of year where fish are not super shallow, not on laydowns, docks, you know, shallow grass, things you can use from the kayak without having to use your electronics. This tool right here can be extremely effective in finding those fish that are not on the bank and maybe are pushed offshore a little bit or even helping you find the simple cover and pieces of structure where those fish are gonna be holding to offshore. Now it is called a fish finder. One thing that it is really good at is finding offshore rock piles, brush piles, any submerged cover, including grass, submerged points, etc., that hold fish. A lot of people believe that with a fish finder, in the name fish finder, that you're strictly looking for fish, but in a lot of times you're looking for the pieces of cover where those fish are going to hold to. And today we are going to go out in the water and show you exactly that. So as we discussed, there are times a year when fish are right on the bank where you don't necessarily need electronics to target those fish, but there are times of the year in certain situations, uh, specific regions or lakes, where these fish push off, they're offshore, and they're relatively difficult to target without fishing electronics. And what we have here is a Humminbird Helix 10 Mega Side Imaging, and there are certain lakes that don't have mapping. And what we're doing right now is we have our Humminbird auto chart ship in here. What this does is creates a custom map for you, whereas some lakes like I'm at right now that do not have any sort of mapping to it, it creates your, your own custom map and kind of gives you, kind of almost unlocks the juice for you as you're graphing and trying to find these fish or as you're fishing around the lake. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this helix on side imaging and down imaging, and I'm gonna start covering water. I'm gonna let this auto chart ship start filling up, let my map start to create, and also I'm just gonna take observations, mark some waypoints on my graph as I go along, because that side imaging, what it does is it creates, it allows me to see what is below the surface. Um, right now I have it on 80 feet to the right and to the left. Um, and then obviously down imaging gives you what is below you in that cone pending what depth you're in. So as I'm searching, this is gonna allow me to see accurately what's below and what is to the side. Therefore, I can get a really good lay of the land, find some stuff that I cannot see with my own eyes. Again, whether it might be schools of fish, rock piles, grass lines, timber, brush piles, whatever it may be, there's different things that these fish can set up on offshore and then therefore help you target. And then we're gonna look for those things and then we're gonna show you how to therefore take that, your waypoints that you've marked on your graph, bring up your map and therefore use your boat positioning to target that and try to catch some fish. So we're gonna get to pedal in here and see if we can find some fish. So one of the first things I'm noticing right now is this place has a really good grass line with some nice red top milfoil and also that there is really hard bottom. And what you can tell actually on your graph, well, I'll show you guys right here, is that depending on the bottom composition, your graph will actually be brighter. And the brighter that is, is the harder the bottom. And typically that creates for better areas where fish are gonna set up. And typically harder bottom areas is gonna have uh, healthier grass and therefore more fish will congregate to those areas. So we've been graphing around some grass lines here. And I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna go back over it with side imaging and show you exactly the type of thing that I'm looking for when doing this kind of thing to see what fish are holding on. Whether it's man-made or not, this one specifically is actually man-made. It kind of looks like a crib or an old dock that's down here. I'll show you guys what I mean here in a second. So right there, it looks like something man-made, like it's wood, because uh, it's a little bit brighter. So there's a little bit of a better return, but it's not like bright like metal would be. Uh, because again, remember the harder the object, the brighter the return is going to be. But something like this, a little bit harder cover, can be good to have these fish set up on. So we're gonna get positioned here with the wind coming at us and uh, see if we can't throw a couple casts and maybe catch some fish off this thing. It is like decent size, I don't know what it is yet. I got a little, little large mouth. There we go. And that is why this can be such an advantage, having fishing electronics when these fish aren't super shallow. And uh, 
that piece of cover we saw it we turned around and positioned right on it with the wind because right here right off to our side is a, a really shallow grass line so what you want to do is position yourself with the wind using your GPS and your mapping here to get you the best shot at catching one of these suckers we'll let this baby go so as we were saying earlier there are lakes and times of year where the fish are not on the bank, are not on docks, are not on lay down super shallow that are really accessible, especially from a kayak. And this is where fishing electronics can come into play. With fishing electronics being the hot topic right now, you don't need to have forward facing sonar or anything crazy to do this kind of fishing. To find fish offshore, you kind of just need the basics. Side imaging makes a world of difference, but you do not need it. With mapping, 2D, down imaging, you can get offshore and find these pieces of structure. You can find fish. You can set up on them correctly using your mapping and catch fish when they're not on the banks. There's things you can find, and especially using your fishing electronics, it can be a big advantage to making your day from a two, three fish day to 15 to 20 fish. It can make the world a difference. Hope you guys took a little tidbit, learned a little bit from this video. We appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time on In Fisherman.